This is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. Today I have another exciting episode for you. One of the questions I get so much is, Hey John, what do you eat on your raw foods diet? So instead of like, you know, some people on YouTube make videos, Oh, this is what I'm eating today. What I'm going to do is show you guys what I eat like literally in a whole week. There's a lot of food I eat in a whole week, you know, and uh, the easiest way to show you guys is right when I come back from the wholesale produce market. So I was just down there this morning. It's about a one hour drive down to San Francisco. And I usually go there maybe once every two weeks, sometimes once every week, but once every two weeks. And some of the foods that I buy will actually save for a week or definitely two uh, until I'm ready to eat them. So uh, let's get into today, today's episode and show you guys what I eat in a week or two. <laughs> so here's the car and uh, you can see we're just loaded up with all kinds of produce. And you know, the majority of my diet is fresh fruits and fresh vegetables. So let's go ahead and introduce you to some of the produce items and actually how much they cost because these prices actually may amaze you. Uh, first, for a treat, I got these guys. These are California dates, uh, organic, and these are uh, date pecan rolls. This is a case of 11, not 12. So I got a deal on it, a case of these guys for 11 packs worth, uh, I think, 25 bucks. Normally I think each one of these sell for maybe four or five bucks retail. So you could definitely save some money by buying wholesale in large quantities. Now these guys I'm not going to eat in a week. These guys are going to stay in my fridge and you know I might dole them out to me maybe one pack a week or less if that. I don't eat uh, you know dried foods which I would consider dates a dried food although some would consider it fresh all that often. I prefer to eat fresh foods. Because what you're going to notice on what I'm eating is that most of what I'm eating are high water content foods or foods that contain a lot of water. When we're babies and when we're born, you know, we're about 90% water and on a daily basis I'm usually 70 to 75% water and you are too. And we want to be eating the foods that are going to give us water so that we can stay hydrated because many diseases can be caused by just basically dehydration. All right, next here, we got some Brussels sprouts. So I stopped by the farmer's market on the way home from the wholesale produce market and got some uh, little baby Brussels sprouts. Now, I bought these, not because I eat Brussels sprouts normally, I'm actually growing Brussels sprouts in my yard, uh, but I got these actually to juice because I had a request on uh, ju making a juicing video about uh, juicing Brussels sprouts and how the juicers would do. So if you aren't familiar, you want to check my other YouTube channel. It's simply called Raw Foods or my website discountjuicers.com where I teach people about the different appliances that will allow you to eat more fresh fruits and vegetables because in my opinion those are absolutely the healthiest. Next here we got some Adolfo mangoes. So these Adolfo mangoes here, check it out. These guys are nice and ripe, uh, nice yellow, a little bit soft. These guys are ready to eat and enjoy now. This is like a case of like 20 or something like that, $13.50. Once again, these are organic. So as I go through the produce, you're going to notice that most of what I eat, am eating is actually, in fact, organic. There's a few items that are not organic because they're not available organic, and I believe that they maybe have low pesticide residues. That being said, I would encourage you to do the best you can and encourage you to eat organic and actually even beyond organic, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, because you're just going to minimize the amount of pesticides and toxins that you're taking in. I mean, I'm taking toxins in right now, breathing in the air, and we want to minimize the amount of toxins, whether they're coming in through our food, through our skin, or, you know, through breathing. That being said, if you don't have the money to afford organics, I do want to say that I have another video that explains, do you need to eat organic foods? And the resounding answer is no. In my opinion, it's best to eat organic foods, but if you can't afford it or for some other reason, you don't want to, then conventional produce is far better than buying processed foods, in my opinion. All right, next, we got a really good deal on just a standard mangoes. I think these uh, mangoes are the, uh, maybe the Hayden mangoes, and there's a case of 12, and this case was uh, $13. So these guys are a lot larger, not quite as ripe, so probably this first week I'm gonna eat the Adolfos, also called champagne mangoes. And then the second week, once these guys ripen up, I'll be eating these guys. So the next food I'm gonna talk about today are the blueberries. Now I didn't get the blueberries actually at the wholesale produce market. Actually, they're more expensive at the wholesale produce market than going to a local Costco 
or warehouse club. So these blueberries are 24 ounces, that's one pound and a half. So two of them are three pounds and each one was $6.49. So for literally three pounds of blueberries, it's about 13 bucks. And right here, this is like one meal for me. I'll be three pounds in one sitting, then I'll feel quite fine for several hours. But nonetheless, blueberries, once again, they're blue. And another thing I wanna encourage you to do is eat your foods of color. I think all the different foods I've had so far all have different colors and pigments, and those pigments are basically antioxidants in them that basically protect us from free radical damage. So definitely really healthy to eat a, the spectrum. Next box out, what we have here are some pears. These are some bossed pears, and you know, the next uh, three boxes, these boxes were approximately, let's see, I think they're about $15 each. I mean, this is definitely like 30 pounds of pears for 15 bucks. Can't beat that with a stick. Anyways, I like to eat pears uh, when they're optimally ripe. I mean, the ripest pears I've ever had were right off a tree when the tree dropped the, the pear off the tree in front of my feet. And to me, it tastes as sweet as canned pears that you may have had as a kid. These guys aren't going to be nearly as good. Um, a lot of these are bruised. This is like a seconds box. But what I have been doing with these guys is I like to dehydrate these. And then I'll actually make a dried fruit for like when I travel. Uh, dried pears, especially if they're ripe, man, they taste like candy and they're so delicious. The other thing that I do with a lot of the fruits that I buy in bulk, such as the pears and what we're going to talk about next, the apples, are I do juicing. So uh, in my juices, uh, sometimes I'll use the base of apples or pears or part apple and pear along with my greens that I'm going to end up juicing. So this next box here, another heavy box, about 35 pounds of apples. Once again, this was less than 15 bucks. Check it out. These guys are beautiful. These ones are called Panova apples. Once again, probably a variety you've never heard of. I've had these before, and they have a nice, really nice coloring on them. Once again, for me, unless I don't have any other fruit to eat, like uh, the mangoes or the blueberries, uh, I'm usually just don't sit down and crunch apples unless I'm traveling because they're easy and convenient to eat. I generally like to juice them, though, into my juices to add some flavor to my green vegetable juices. So 35 pounds of Panova apples. These were seconds once again for less than 15 bucks. Here's the next box, another box of apples. These were too good to pass up. I mean, $15 for about 35 pounds of apples. That's less than 50 cents a pound. Totally amazing. Oh, and check out these guys. These guys are Empire apples, another variety that's probably not too often heard about. But these guys I like because they have a nice dark rich uh, red color. I mean, that's a deep red. And once again, most of the nutrition in the apple is the skin and near the skin itself. So you want to eat your apple skins. Wow, there's a nice big dent. That's why I got these for, for so cheap. Nonetheless, we'll juice them, cut out the bad spots. And uh, the apple juice tastes so great, especially when mixed in with some greens to balance out the sugars. Next thing I got, I got a whole case of Roma tomatoes. So these Roma tomatoes, once again, they are organic as were the apples and the pears and the caracaras. Uh, these are organic uh, on the vine Romas. Uh, this was about $12 for uh, nine packs. So that's nine pounds for 12 bucks. These ones, once again, were seconds. They're a little bit considered overripe in the produce industry because these have a much shorter shelf life. So I'll be sure to use some of these very quickly. I like to put tomatoes, sometimes in my juice, but more than likely I'll make a soup with them or also add them to my salads or actually make salad dressings out of them. This is yet another heavy, heavy box. And these guys are uh, cactus pears, also called uh, prickly pear cactuses or tunas in the uh, Mexican or ethnic markets. And these are the fruit from the cactus uh, plant. And these guys are the purple variety. There's also a green variety. In Hawaii, they call them paninis. And these are definitely good. Now, they're definitely seeded and have lots of seeds. But what I like to do with these guys, once again, when you start juicing these guys up, and that's what I do with these guys, I juice them up. I remove the skin. That's definitely very important. Now, you can swallow the seeds if you choose to eat them. But if I got mangoes to eat, I'd rather eat mangoes and juice these guys. And I juice these guys up because these have, once again, some dark, rich purple colors which are really good antioxidants. And once again, 
every food that you're seeing here has a whole spectrum of nutrition in it. So don't just get into the routine of eating, you know, apples, bananas, and organic oranges and romaine lettuce. I mean, hopefully this is inspiring you to eat a wide variety of produce. These ones are not organic, but I believe these guys aren't sprayed because pretty much bugs don't mess with these guys too much. Another thing about these guys is that they have an amazing shelf life. I have some actually from at least a month ago in the fridge that are still good. So I'm going to be sure to use those before I even dig into these guys. Next is one of my favorite uh, reasons why I went down the produce market. Uh, these guys can be hard to find uh, otherwise and actually also very expensive. What I have here are Coco Selecto Tierno. And I'm not, uh, I don't read Spanish so I know that means uh, select coconuts tierno, maybe means young, I'm not sure. But nonetheless, what these guys are, are the uh, coconuts. These are the white coconuts, and uh, you know, I've pretty much uh, stopped or rarely purchased the uh, Thai coconuts nowadays. I used to purchase a lot of the Thai coconuts, but you know, since I've learned that they are definitely uh, dipped in fungicides and sulfites, and some people may say they're dipped in formaldehyde, which my research didn't show, but it, my research did show they're dipped in thymobenzol, which is a fungicide that they treat non-organic bananas with, and actually other fruits, and also sulfides. Um, I decided to go with these guys instead. Also, the young coconuts always have a basically sickly sweet flavor, and they always taste the same, and the meat's always about the same. Uh, so I actually, I, I prefer these guys. These are uh, white coconuts that are not treated. These will definitely mold and not last as long as the Thai coconuts. The water in each of these tastes always different and the meat's a little bit thicker. So I don't often eat the meats as they come out of the coconut. Sometimes I will if, if, if they're younger. But what I mostly do is actually I'll grind up the meats and dehydrate the meats and be able to make my own coconut oils for skin care and coconut butters and use the coconut in pies and different things if I go to potlucks. But the main use for these guys is the water. The water is the most valuable thing. It's full and rich in electrolytes and I'd rather be drinking coconut water than filtered tap water. And yes, I did get two cases of coconuts. There's uh, 20 nuts in each case and each case was $20. So uh, basically I'm going to end up drinking the water out of the, all these and then uh, dehydrating the meat to use in a recipes. And if you are interested in coconuts, I have at least a half dozen videos on coconuts. Coconuts are one of my favorite foods and I teach you guys how to open them up and how to use them to make coconut milks, you know, and coconut oil, coconut butter, a coconut cream and all the other kind of coconut products. So the next thing I got, oh and once again the coconuts are non-organic but I believe they're not sprayed. I mean coconuts are very uh, resilient to bugs and insects and whatnot. Next thing I got also non-organic, uh, this was on the uh, top 10 least sprayed um, produce, conventional produce items. And what we have right here are one whole case of avocados. Now, I don't eat this many avocados in a week or even two weeks. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these in the fridge. And these are actually fairly ripe. But if you put them in the fridge, they will last a little bit. I'm also going to share these with friends. But I just couldn't pass this deal up. This is 84 avocados. And it was like $21. So, I mean, they don't get any cheaper than that. And... You know, I had, a, I had one on the way home. They're definitely good. So my next case, I want to introduce you to a friend of mine, and his name is Jack. Hey, Jack. How you doing? <laughs> so I got Jack in the box. Hey, get it? This is Jack in the box. And uh, no, there's nobody in here. These are one of my favorite fruits. These guys are called Jack Fruits. These guys have an amazing uh, flavor. They taste like juicy fruit gum. This is a box of 40 pounds, it was uh, $34. And you can see here, these guys are definitely quite large and heavy. And they smell so delicious. So I'll be definitely uh, feasting on some jackfruit probably later today. So that's pretty much all the uh, fruit that I purchased. And the last thing that you'll see that I purchased, I got some organic green. So this is basically four pounds of uh, organic baby spinach for a grand total of six dollars so that's an amazing price uh, this is two pounds right here the only reason I got this is to fill in 
I can't resist buying uh, spinach for this inexpensive. Once again, it's organic. And also I have to do a juicing demonstration using spinach. And you may notice you're like, John, do you eat like mostly a fruit diet? Because by what I purchased, you would think that I ate mostly fruit because that's all that I purchased except for the spinach. But you would be wrong. So what I strive to do is eat seasonally. So as you can see, all these produce items are in season somewhere in the world because that's how I got them. But more importantly than that, I encourage you to eat locally whenever possible. Unfortunately, in the winter time, there's not a, lot of, a whole lot of local fruits, although I was eating some pineapple guavas and um, Incan berries the other day. They're pretty much out of season now. So, but what I do do is I eat my locally grown and actually front yard grown vegetables. So now we're gonna walk around my garden to show you guys what I'm growing. And uh, if you're not growing this, I would encourage you to grow your own food because truly that's the best raw food money can't buy. The ones that you grew yourself in your front yard using mineral rich rock dust and high quality compost. So uh, let's go ahead and take in a tour to show you guys what's in season right now in my front yard and what I'll be eating this week. So aside from that spinach you saw me buy, I only bought that because it was four pounds for six bucks. I'm going to be juicing it and it goes really fast when you juice it. Um, I pretty much grow all my own vegetables and pretty much depending on where you live, you could grow your vegetables all year round. If you live somewhere where it snows, you'll need definitely like a hoop house with a compost pile to keep it warm and you won't even need to use any supplemental heating to grow you know, cold tolerant vegetables like kales and whatnot. Everything being grown here is what you're seeing is what you're getting. This is being grown right now in January and it, yes, today there was actually frost on my window. So all these plants will survive a frost, no problem. So this is why I don't buy the greens because I'm literally growing them myself. If you want to learn more about growing your own food, which I would recommend above anything else in this video, check out my other website, growingyourgreens.com. So I want to introduce you to just some of the things that I'm growing, hopefully to once again let you know that I eat a variety of produce. You know, I'm not just eating romaine hearts today, tomorrow, and the next day. Every day I come out to my garden, see what's ready to be harvested, and I pick a little bit of that item and I'll eat it that day. The next day I'll come out and eat a whole different produce item. And you know, it's very important to grow a variety of things and some of these things you can't even buy anywhere because they're too fragile and perishable to be shipped. So uh, let's get started. Over in this front bed, and once again, this is just a front yard of a residential house. This lot is about 0.13 of an acre, so it's not that much space. You don't really need that much space to grow a lot of food if you do it right. In this front bed, you can see we have a variety of things growing, things like collard greens. Here's some broccoli growing. I believe I have some cauliflower over here. And uh, down below all the uh, broccoli and things like that down below, this is all my spinach. So you could literally see this whole bed is just filled with spinach. Now I could sit here and pluck off individual leaves and you know, I will be doing that, but I want to let these guys get a bit larger before I start eating these guys. Now, once again, stuff you grow at home is even going to be more nutrition packed than the stuff you buy, even if it's organic. Number one, I know that I'm growing it in rock dust minerals and organic compost, which probably far exceeds how they're growing the commercial organic spinaches. Plus, as you just saw, I just fresh picked this. So from soil to mouth, it has the most nutrition ever. Once produce is picked, the nutrition starts to go down slowly over time. Now that being said, don't get down if that's all you could get is produce from Whole Foods or wherever you're buying it. That's definitely far better than packaged foods, but better than that is growing it yourself and picking it and eating it only when you need to. So here actually one of my favorite, this is a red Russian kale right here. And I want you to know, oh, and here's some uh, baby uh, dandelions that we just planted and some Swiss chard red chard and some uh, green chard. In addition, I want to show you this guy. This guy is actually growing as a weed in my garden, although to me it's only a weed if it's not edible. But uh, to many this is a weed, and here it is right here. This one's called stinging nettles. And uh, these have little stingers on you, they'll get you. But what many people don't know is that these are also edible. I'll actually blend these up in the blender or uh, sometimes juice them, but I'll also just pick them and slice them up really good and add them to salads. They're definitely an excellent green that's rarely you could find to buy them. Even at farmer's market, you could rarely find them because once you harvest them, they wilt really fast and lose vitality quick. So you really gotta grow them. 
But the good news is you could just take a handful of stinging nettle seeds, probably throw them out in a undeveloped space or a space where there's nothing growing and they'll literally come up as weeds and probably even take over. So you'll have a stinging nettle garden. And actually over at the community garden where I grow more food, I do have a patch of just German stinging nettles that I got on a trip to Germany. In addition, what's very important I want to show you guys, and I'll point out a few of these throughout my garden, is what I'm growing in the front here. So you might be thinking, oh, John, that's very pretty. You know, you're growing some flowers to make it look pretty. No, no, no. I don't waste space on things that can't be eaten. And what these guys are are violas, uh, pretty much similar to pansies. Uh, I grow these actually for the flowers. The flowers are also edible. So besides fruits and vegetables, I encourage you to eat many varieties of the edible flowers. Flowers are an amazing food, and yet, for the most part, undiscovered. Most people don't know that you could eat flowers and actually how nutritionally dense they are. I mean, every flower has amazing colors. Look at those amazing colors. Also, uh, the flowers have contained pollen. And, you know, instead of letting bees collect the pollen and eating pollen secondhand, if we eat the flowers, we get the pollen, number one. And number two, we get all the rich antioxidants, phytochemicals and phytonutrients and trace nutrients in the pigments of the flower. Mmm, and violas are the, my favorite. They taste like uh, C's candy, if you ever see hard candy if you, when I was a kid. But it tastes like the candy, but without the sweetness. So if you take some flowers, put it in the middle of a date and eat it, man, that is the bomb. The other thing people don't know is that there's many uncommon greens, like the stinging nettles. Um, it's this guy right here, once again, the viola greens. So the greens of the viola, once again, another leafy green you can pick and put into your salads. Mmm, tastes kind of just like the viola, but a little bit stronger. It's definitely good nonetheless. So I want to encourage you to eat a wide variety of foods and even foods that you may not even know of. And I'd recommend an excellent website, pfaf.org. It's Plants for a Future database that lists, you know, almost all the edible foods on Earth, although there are some that I found that aren't in there. But that's definitely the best resource online so that you can learn about some of these foods that are pretty much not known and you could eat these and get the nutrition from all these wild and edible foods found in nature. Next, let's walk underneath my fig tree and see what's growing over there. So now we're standing underneath my fig tree and in the summertime the fig tree has leaves on it and produces figs for me. But in the wintertime it goes dormant but I make the best use of the space underneath the fig tree to have all this stuff growing. And you might think, oh, John, that looks like some nice ground cover. Well, you'd be right. It is a nice ground cover, but it's also edible. And you could also see right here, I cut this little patch out just the other night with some scissors to put in my salad the other night. And uh, what I'm growing here are called, is called miner's lettuce. And uh, at this point right now, I consider these miner's lettuce sprouts. So miner's lettuce, once again, it's a a wild vegetable eaten by the miners that came to California when they're panning for gold. It's an amazing vegetable. Uh, usually people get them when they're actually nice and large. They look kind of like lily pads with little flowers coming out the middle. But I actually prefer to eat them when they're in the sprout-like stage like this and they're younger. So I'll just clear cut them. And uh, within a, actually I cut this a few days ago and you could already see some of the new growth coming out. So this will, you could cut this and come again. In addition, I'm trying to set up systems in my yard so that things will grow on their own without my intervention. So last year, I seeded and bought seeds for the miner's lettuce, and I seeded this area. It grew much like it's growing now, and by the time it's heated up for springtime, uh, the plants have gone to flower and seed. They dropped their seeds, the seeds landed in the ground, and the following season, these guys came up again. So now I'm fairly confident that every year in this area, during the winter, I'm always going to have miner's lettuce without even having to lift a finger to replant it. This is yet another one of my front raised beds and I'm growing, once again, a lots of lettuce. So, you know, why buy lettuce when you have it growing for free outside? I have many different varieties, some red, some red romaine, and here's one of my favorite, uh, the speckled lettuce. These guys are absolutely beautiful. Uh, I also have things like bok choy and red Russian kale and things mixed in. But if you notice down below the lettuce is growing, there's all this stuff right here. And this is yet another uh, edible weed, or that many would consider a weed. And actually it's called chickweed. <laughs> so chickweed, 
definitely another edible green that you can literally just pick and add to salads. Mmm, so delicious when it's nice and young and so tender like that. Once again, it's another edible crop that, you know, most, have you even eaten chickweed before? I don't know, post it down below. Probably not. So I wanna encourage you once again, eat variety, one of my big messages of this video. So besides growing a lot of vegetables, I do have some fruit trees and one of them that's still fruiting right now is right above me. This is my Fahoa or pineapple guava tree. And there's a fruit there you could see still on the plant. Now most of these have already actually already dropped off the plant and that's when you know when they're ripe, when they literally drop off the plant and you wanna pick these off the ground, that's when they're oddly ripe. I probably have another video on these. These are one of my favorite uh, winter fruits to be eaten. I wanna show you guys like really quick a, a few more fruits that I'm growing and then we're gonna also show a lot more vegetables that I'm growing as well. While summer is long over, one of the fruits that I'm still harvesting in my garden is this guy right here. This is called the lychee tomato and this is related to the tomato. It's in the Solanaceae family. It has these nice uh, rose type thorns on the plant, but it also makes these incredible uh, fruits right here. And uh, once again, this is another fruit that you're definitely, and I've never seen for sale anywhere. So if you don't grow these yourself, you're not gonna have access to nutrition in these foods. I definitely know this contains a lot of lycopene, but this is one of those unstudied plants. So, you know, this may contain the next cancer fighting phytonutrient. So why limit yourself? Why not eat all the nutrients that you can by eating the widest variety of foods you can? So here's the next plant that I'm gonna probably be eating a lot of in the next day or two. It's known as the Incanberry, Cape Gooseberry, or Poha Berry. And actually, oftentimes you'll see dried Incanberries. Well, why eat them dried when you could have them fresh? And uh, here's one right here. You can see they come in this little Chinese lantern type thing. And you're just going to peel it open. On the inside, you're going to have a nice, brilliant yellow fruit. And I can guarantee you guys, this tastes nothing like the dried stuff. Freshest with the water content, fresh picked, is always better than dried. Mmm. Amazingly sweet flavor with a hint of tartness. So good. Now we're at another one of my raised beds. And in this raised bed, I have a whole bunch of these guys. And these guys are either some uh, collard greens or cauliflower or broccoli or cabbage growing. It's in the brassica family. And, uh, you know, have you ever seen a plant look like this that you've ever eaten? eaten? Here it is right here. This is a variegated variety. Now this is an amazing variety, check it out. This one not only allows you to get the green or the chlorophyll, but there's also nutrients in this white coloring of the plant. So how many white foods have you eaten lately that aren't white bread or things like white sugar and contain white flour? So I definitely like to get my whites too. Down below on the understory, we have uh, parsley planted out. Now I do eat parsley as a vegetable. Although many consider it an herb, I like to just literally go through and pick a whole bunch of parsley and have a whole, basically like a parsley salad with avocado and sprouted buckwheat. Oh, it's so delicious. Another crop I'm growing besides the Italian parsley planted in front, and you just saw actually the curly parsley, so I have both varieties of parsley and there's a lot of other varieties too. But behind it here, you can see I'm growing some celery. So this is how the celery, celery looks like. We could just pull off stalks and uh, th eat this stuff. Now let me tell you, stuff you grow, I mean, I was blown away when I tried this celery. Has an amazing flavor, not like the stuff you buy in the store. It's like, the stuff in the store is like literally watered down. And besides the celery that I could use and eat, this one is actually grown for the root. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull a celery root up for you. Show you guys what it looks like. Oh man, look at that. Here's the, uh, the head of celery that I'm probably gonna juice later today. And man, this root is massive. Here we go, this is one celery root. I'm gonna probably spiralize this into like a salad and eat it. Celery root is nice and crunchy, kinda like the texture of a jicama, if you're familiar with jicama. Uh, it's just so delicious and so good. This took, I don't know, maybe uh, four months or something to grow from the time we planted it to now and it got super huge. So celery and celery root, yet another food that I'll be eating this week. I don't discriminate. I love vegetables and fruits of all colors. Here's one right here. 
radicchio or radicchio. It's an endive, and uh, this guy is kind of bitter. I have friends that don't like to eat bitter things, but I, you know, once again, I'm an equal opportunity eater. <laughs> I like to eat fruits and vegetables of all colors. Once again, every different food has a different nutrient profile. If you never eat radicchio, you're probably not going to get some of those indols or phenols or polyphenol groups or whatever's in here that's good for you. Another vegetable that I have available to me any time of the day is this right here. I, you can see I got lots of bok choy. Bok choy does excellent this time of year and I have so much bok choy I have to give it to friends and family. Uh, lately what I've been doing is I've been juicing the bok choy instead of juicing something like celery or cucumbers for the bulk of my green juices. Actually you can see this right here. We'll get a nice large leaf right here. And the favorite part of my bok choy, besides the greens, is this nice large stem. This stem is nice and water rich, has a nice neutral flavor and makes an excellent juice or just slice it up really thin and have a bok choy salad. That's what I've been doing with this stuff lately. It's so delicious. Right now, all these sprouts coming up in this raised bed are available for me to eat. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and get in here and eat a couple right now. Uh, some of these we planted out a little bit too close, so when you do thin out your uh, plant starts, you could take them and pick them. And what this is, these are radish sprouts. They're gonna turn into full-size radishes, but if they're too close, it's better to thin them out. So I'll come and thin these out and eat lunch at the same time. Mmm! Radish sprouts are so delicious, especially when they're this young. They're really nice and mild. And sprouts definitely have a lot of nutrition in them. In this area, actually, this actually reseeded itself, so that's my goal to get everything to reseed. But this is an, another amazing green. If you live in Europe, you're quite familiar with this, but Americans pretty much don't know about this one. This one's called Mache or Mosh, M-A-C-H-E, oftentimes available at uh, organic uh, supermarket in like uh, with the bag mixes. This guy grows amazingly, and actually this is probably my top favorite uh, winter salad green. They just have these nice little leaves here and uh, you could eat them. They have a nice delicate butter, butter, buttery flavor. I like it much more than lettuce. So you can buy this, uh, you know, in trade. can be hard to find, but if you grow it, it's even more delicious. In this area, we got some more sprouts coming up. And once again, uh, they look like they need to be thinned out. And these ones are actually quite young. We're going to go ahead and pull this guy up. And what these guys are, are turnip sprouts. So much like radishes, turnips are another root crop. You can eat the sprouts too, but I'm going to wait for these guys to turn up into turnips. Wait, to turn up. <laughs> hey, wait, they're going to turn up pretty soon. But anyways... The turnips, as you know, most people eat the roots, but this is a special variety of turnip that I'm growing for the greens. This is a haikiri variety, a uh, Japanese variety that's actually grown for the greens, but also the, uh, the tuber underneath the ground. So both the greens and the uh, underground root are edible. Now basically on all radishes and all turnips, the greens are pretty much edible, although they may not taste good. So this is a variety that's actually nice and mild and tastes good too. Once again, I like to grow a lot of sprouts, but I don't do them in my kitchen. I just leave it up to nature for them to grow. Here we have a lots of garden cress growing. And uh, some of this we're going to just uh, weed out and we can just eat the cress sprouts. And some of this we're actually going to let it grow uh, much longer so they get larger. So the cress... When it's a baby, still has a nice peppery, peppery texture and flavor, but delicious nonetheless. Right here, what we're looking at are, once again, more greens planted. I have some standard mustard greens here, but when you grow your own food, you have access, once again, to more different kinds of foods and varieties. Here's some mustard greens that I like a lot. Now, this is a, I don't know, Japanese-style mustard green. I don't actually know the name. And, you know, I don't tend to eat a lot of mustard greens on my diet, but I might pick, you know, a little bit of a leaf and, you know, uh, put that in a salad or something for some flavor. There's definitely some good properties in there, but if I eat a lot, actually, I get a mucus reaction, which tells me it's not so good for me. Another crop I have year-round is right here behind me. I mean, it grows quite tall. Some of the plants I have are like 12 feet tall. These are called tree collards because they literally grow as trees, and this provides me food 365 days a year every single day of the year. So uh, they're definitely especially good in the winter time when they get sweeter 
and I'll often have uh, collard green smoothies, even collard salads, uh, tree collard salads. Right here we have mallow, also called malva. And uh, once again, this is another weed type plant. And if you uh, grow these and pick them, they're gonna wilt really fast. So you literally need to just grow them, pick them and eat them yourself. This grow, will grow very easy. This is actually called purple tree mallow. And it grows nice and tall into like a tree. It'll only grow one season and then it'll actually massively reseed and might, ev might even take over your garden. So you can see I easily picked a leaf. I'll add these to salad and juices and blend them up too. And they have a nice mucilaginous texture. They're quite good. Once again, any green that could expand your repertoire of foods you eat is a good thing. Another crop I have is bronze fennel. Once again, this has gone to seed and dropped seed and I didn't even plant this here. It comes up like crazy. The bronze fennel, once again, it's a bronze color. So once again, the bronze color means different antioxidants and different nutrients than the standard fennel. And nice and uh, looks almost like a little seaweed or something. But I like to chop this off and sometimes put it in salads or salad dressings. Get my salad dressings and salads. A nice licorice type flavor. Mmm. In general, I only eat the small little tips and just a little bit at a time. A little bit goes a long way. I could also probably harvest the uh, fennel bulbs that are down here at the bottom. Although this kind is not necessarily grown for the bulbs. There's different varieties to grow if you wanted it to grow specifically for the bulb which would be more like a celery. Another plant that I'm growing that you probably don't have access to unless you uh, drink it uh, hot, uh, this is actually the tea plant, Camellia sinensis. Um, you can eat tea leaves raw and fresh, picked off the plant, so you're gonna get all the antioxidants in the tea that it's known for. And what I like to do normally is I like to find some good leaves, and this uh, tree's been having some challenges. I'll just find a small little baby leaf I'll pick it, and uh, once again, this just gets chopped up, put right in my salad. It does have a nice bitter flavor, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend eating them a lot, but instead of drinking tea, why don't you eat, eat it? Here's yet another food that I could harvest any day of the year. It's actually called Bloody Dock, or also known as Red Variegated Sorrel. You can see here, this is the plant here, and it's a nice, uh, colorful plant. Once again, probably rich in nutrients because of all the colors. I'm going to go ahead and pick a leaf right there. And I find that the smaller leaves are definitely best eaten. If they do get larger, they're better be juiced or blended or actually made into red variegated kale chips. Then they actually get nice and salty in the dehydrator. Mmm. It's a nice lemony type flavor. It's good, but most people may not like it. Another one of my favorite vegetables is what many would consider an herb. It's cilantro. So once again, like I like to do with parsley, like to do the same with cilantro, come around and pick a whole bunch of cilantro leaves and I'll make a salad out of just 100% cilantro. Mmm. I love cilantro. Cilantro is one of the best vegetables that I'm growing actually for detoxification, especially from heavy metals. Here's yet another flower that I have access to that I'm growing and I love to eat my flowers once again for the antioxidants, for the pollen. Uh, they're so delicious and actually there's nectar on these flowers the hummingbirds like this flower this is called the pineapple sage plant you could eat the uh, leaves as a sage but i don't generally eat too many of the leaves but i do like to eat the flower so you just go to the flower and you're going to pick that off and on the end there you can see the little white tip that's where the nectar is contained that's what the hummingbirds like mm, i like to bite off that white tip you get a burst of sweetness much like eating fruit and then you'll eat the rest of the red part, which contains all the antioxidants and probably lycopene too. In this area, I have another crop growing. I have a few other plantings of it, but it's, uh, it looks pretty good here. This one's actually called New Zealand spinach. So this is another crop that, uh, you know, is not often sold in trade. Once again, on many of my crops, I just like to eat the small baby leaves. They're actually the most tender. So the nice, uh, like, lemony, oxalic -y taste but definitely good nonetheless. Behind me, we have oxalis, and uh, also known as sour grass. I don't see any of the flowers right now, but you could just harvest the, uh, the little leaves and the stems, and you could juice these guys up. One time I was kind of crazy, and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna juice the sour grass. Maybe it's gonna taste like a lemonade. Well, let me tell you, it didn't taste like lemonade. It tasted kind of nasty. So if you're gonna juice it, only juice a little bit into your vegetable juice. 
Mmm. Or you can cut up it in salads. Definitely has a nice flavor that you can probably see on my face. Another crop I have growing here is this guy. This is called walking stick kale or walking stick cabbage. It's from the Channel Islands and they actually grow this plant for the stock which they turn into a walking stick. Uh, it also is used for cattle fodder but you know what besides being cattle fodder we could eat these guys too. They're just another form of uh, cabbage or uh, kale and I like to juice it or blend it up. I normally don't often uh, you know eat it as a salad green though but I could do that if I wanted to but there's so many other things I'd rather eat in my garden. Another thing I could be eating any day of the week is this guy right here. This is a purple curly kale. This is just an amazing rich deep purple color. Imagine all the antioxidants and nutrients in this deep rich purple kale. Yum. Another crop I have so much of right now it's not even funny are these guys right here. Uh, basically above the ground they were a sunflower type plant but the food is actually below the ground so you could actually see I'm gonna go ahead and dig down and you can see they're right here I'm just gonna go ahead and literally pull one off and break it off and what that guy is is this is called the sunchoke or Jerusalem artichoke these are high in inulin or FOS this is actually the prebiotic which is what feeds your probiotics in your gut so this is it feeds the healthy bacteria these guys are delicious and edible raw. I like to slice them up into chips and dip them into some guacamole. Here's yet another rare and unusual green that I have access to whenever I want because it's grown in my garden. This one's actually called rock lettuce and I bet actually most of you guys or all you guys have never heard of that. I just found out about it earlier this year and yet another crop I'm growing grows quite well. Any day of the year I could come out and just pick some of these leaves doesn't seem to be affected too bad by bugs. Eat it. And it has a un quite unique flavor. It kind of tastes like go-to cola if you've ever had fresh go-to cola, but it's like actually tastes better than go-to cola. It's actually kind of like sweet even. Man, it's just so delicious. I think I'm gonna grow more this rock lettuce. In this area of my backyard, we have lots more greens growing. You can see here uh, it mixed in with the fallen leaves are arugula so I have a you know so much fresh arugula just spread it up on its own nice and spicy you could eat it any time also next to the arugula I have these guys these are actually a uh, borage borage yes that's the flower but I'm growing these guys these are the borage greens I find when they're nice and young they taste the best although they do have some hairs on them so most likely I'll usually uh, blend them up or juice them or cut them small into salads tastes just like lettuce. Now we're here in my unheated greenhouse and I'm gonna harvest yet another food that I have a lot of. I have all these uh, five gallon pots that contain this plant. This one's called yacon or earth apple. It's actually a delicious tuber. Actually one of the sweetest ones that you can eat. So let's see, we're gonna go ahead and uh, take this plant out here. Uh, these plants don't like the frost. And uh, we lost this guy, but even though we lost it above the ground, below the ground, they're still fine, actually. So what we're going to do is we're going to tap off all the dirt inside here. And you can see all these different, all these roots. This is the roots from the... Yacon that we're going to break up to make sure there's no uh, tubers inside this area, which there's not. There's just a lot of rootage. And we're going to come over to this area here, and we're going to carefully shake the, uh, shake the soil off. And you're going to see a few things. So generally, each uh, plant may have uh, several large uh, tubers. And there's actually one right there. I'm going to try to clean this off better for you guys to show you guys what's going on so you can see here we have the stalk of the plant and then we have what I would call the crown because the crown sits at right underneath the soil and the crown is actually where the plant will sprout up new growth this is new growth sprouting right there you can see the new growth here that's sprouting and now a new plant is forming but in addition to the crown there's the storage tubers and the storage tubers are the part you eat they basically just snap off the crown just like this. 
this is where the plant stores its energy so that it has enough energy for the next season. Now, the crown in itself is enough for it to propagate and grow. If you keep cutting these off, it's not going to have as much energy, but it's still going to grow. So it's going to continue to grow, and every year you're going to have more of these tubers to eat. Now, on these tubers, you're going to just take it, wash them off, and peel it with a peeler, and then eat them. They're crunchy like an apple. They're sweet, actually sweeter than a Granny Smith apple, and they're just oh so good. So I found that these definitely take a longer growing season uh, than I maybe gave them in the pots they were. So these guys actually aren't too big, but I have a whole community garden bed full of more yacon to eat. Yacon is also rich in FOS or the inulin, which feeds our probiotics. And actually, I prefer these to the Jerusalem artichokes. And the yacon is yet another crop that I have available for me to eat. It's a tuberous root, and you could also eat the leaves as like a tea or as a medicinal. So I don't eat the leaves in that high quantity. So I got this yacon all washed, and we're just going to take the peeler. And once again, we're going to peel off the outside. So when I initially peeled it and started cracking the, uh, the peeling of the skin, it actually started cracking on its own. And that's just what happens on these guys. These guys are very fragile and delicate, so they can't easily be shipped, and they have actually a really short shelf life. So I'd encourage you actually not to dig your yacon up until you're actually going to use them, because they're not going to actually last. Anyways, you can see this is like a nice uh, clear uh, tuber. We're going to go ahead and break this up and uh, show you what it looks like right there. And uh, we're going to go ahead and try it. Mmm. Nice, rich, watery, a little bit sweet flavor. Now, if you do harvest these and leave them out for a few days, it's going to actually intensify in the sweetness, and then you could peel them and eat them. But you don't want them to get too soft. Once they start going soft, they're starting to go bad. So once they start going soft, eat it as soon as possible. But here's yet another plant that I'm actually very proud of and happy that I found. This one's called Ashitaba, and this is in the Angelica family. This guy is actually a medicinal green. You could go buy powdered ashitaba powder in the health food store you know for a lot of money or better yet you could grow it yourself this is also called tomorrow's leaf because they say you could pick off a leaf today and by tomorrow it's going to grow a new one i haven't found that to be actually the case but nonetheless uh, this one is really rich in antioxidants probably one of the highest foods that i'm growing for like anti-aging so this one i love a lot i like to just pick off leaves eat it fresh juice it and or blend it up the bad news is it doesn't actually grow quite like tomorrow's leaf, and I wish I had a lot more of this stuff to eat. So I'm working on actually building up my collection of plants, and I currently only have three of them. So uh, hopefully soon I'll be growing a lot more ashitaba. This was originally from uh, Japan. So it has an interesting flavor. kind of tastes a little bit like celery leaf, if you've never tasted this before. And I kind of like it. So next, we're going to go ahead and go into my greenhouse to introduce you to a few more crops that I'm currently eating. And, you know, once again, this is just a handful or selection of crops that I have available. There are probably so many other ones that I'm growing that I'm not even mentioning in this video to include a wide range and varieties of different types of produce so that I can be as healthy as possible. And my goal in making this video is to let you guys know that there's so many different things out there that you could be eating that you're probably not, and I want to encourage you to grow your own so you can expand the amount of foods that you can eat. Let's go into the greenhouse to show you some more foods that I eat. The next crop is right here, and you're like, John, that's aloe, and, you, and you're right. This is definitely aloe, but this isn't any kind of aloe. This is actually a special variety called Japanese aloe. So if you've ever tasted aloe before, most aloes, if you try to bite the leaf and the jelly in there, it's so bitter and it tastes really nasty and you're not going to like it. But this special variety of aloe, the leaf is edible and the leaf actually doesn't have that bitter flavor. So you could literally just take leaves off, chop it up for your salad or just eat it like this. And it's sweet as can be. It's just neutral. You're just feeling like the sliminess of the aloe. Aloe is definitely a really great healing food. And I enjoy including it in my meals sometimes because I have all this special variety of Japanese aloe that I could use literally like greens. 
the last thing we're going to talk about that I have access to because I'm growing it is yet another fruit. So yes, I do have lots of fruit trees, but they don't quite produce en masse like all my vegetables do. And this one right here is called babaco. It's uh, related to the papaya. You can see the fruits. They look pretty much like a big mardole papayas. Uh, these ones are green and they're not quite ripe yet. But to find the ripe ones, all you need to do is look down. So I walked in the greenhouse today and check it out. One had dropped off the tree, fell onto the ground, and actually even split when it dropped. So we're going to go ahead and open this guy up for you guys to show you guys what this looks like on the inside. And inside there's this like cotton candy like stuff. Uh, this, these uh, don't have any seeds. And these are nice uh, mild flavor. Now they're not as sweet as a papaya because it is related to the papaya. It has kind of like a lemony neutral papaya flavor but not sweet at all. Mmm. It's definitely kind of good. Nonetheless, most people probably have never tasted babaco fruit and unless you probably grow it yourself, you probably never will either. So in all, I want to summarize this video. My goal of making this video is to show you guys what I eat. My diet contains mostly fresh fruits and fresh vegetables with maybe about a handful of nuts or seeds a day. We do need to get our fats, but most people in raw foods, in my opinion, eat too many fats. I have a really good video explaining this if you haven't already seen it. So I have over 150 videos on this channel sharing with you my teachings about diet. So I hope after watching this video you're like, wow, John really eats a variety of foods and I hope I have inspired you to eat a variety and go out of your way to grow some foods too because truly that's the best way you can eat a raw foods diet is by to grow your own food including fruits and the wealth and all the different varieties of vegetables that you can. Once again, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com, encouraging you to eat and also grow your fresh fruits and vegetables. They're the best.